All right, higher order derivatives, which is basically the derivative of a derivative. Because the derivative itself is still a function, and we can find the derivative of any function, which means you can find the derivative of a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. Um, so you can you know, go on basically forever in most cases. So these derivatives, they're going to utilize all of the same rules as before. Um, so nothing changes except for the notation. So your first derivative uh, we've been using as f prime or y prime uh, or even dy dx. The second derivative, so the derivative of the first, uh, they stick in like an additional prime. So that would be f double prime. Now the notation for the dy dx is d squared y all over d x squared. Um, so there is a reason for all of this, but for time's sake, um, just remember the notation. It's, it is a little odd. Um, the square on the, on the x is really applying to the whole thing. So the square is applying to the dx. Um, they just didn't want to include the parentheses. As the notation got a little bit um, crammed. So they deleted the parentheses out. All right, third derivative, they snuck another prime in there, so f triple prime. And then they're gonna follow that same pattern for this dy dx step. So instead of a two, they would be threes. So d to the third y all over dx with a three down there. Fourth derivative um, and the fifth, sixth, anything beyond the third, instead of like sticking another prime in there, they started just to list out however many primes were in there. So that would be f and then parentheses four up there of x. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to string out all these primes all the way across. So the tenth derivative, you have a little 10 like in the exponent spot just with parentheses around it, of x. All right, so find the third derivative of this function here. Well, to get to the third, we gotta work our way down. So you gotta get the first, then the second, and then finally the third. So the first derivative, or f prime, would be 6x to the fifth plus 12x squared minus 36x. So then the second derivative, I'm gonna take the derivative of what I just wrote. So the derivative of this thing. So that would be 30 x to the fourth plus 24 x minus 36. And then finally the third derivative. This is the derivative of the second. So 120 x to the third plus 20 first. Uh, maybe it was a minor, no I didn't. Um, plus 24. So polynomials are kind of interesting because eventually they're going to get down to one of the derivatives is going to hit zero. Because uh, if you notice for polynomials, the powers or the degree uh, decrease by one every single time you take a derivative. So eventually you're going to get to just a constant and then the deriv all the derivatives from there would just actually be zero. Just a little FYI. All right, example six, find the second derivative of this. Oh, hey. This is uh, gonna need the product rule because I have a product. So I've gotta use the product rule to give me the first derivative. Okay, so the derivative of the x squared, 2x times the e to the x and then plus now I'll switch it. So the derivative of the back term, e to the x times x squared. And I'll just write that in front of it. So there's my first derivative. So now I needed the second derivative. 
So the derivative of 2x to e to the x. Oh gosh, that's going to be the product rule there. So the constant, that 2, I'm gonna just, just going to attach it with the x. So the 2x is the front, the e to the x is the back. So the derivative of 2x is 2 times the back plus the derivative of the back. times the front, so the 2x, plus, now I can do the derivative of x squared e to the x, well I just did that earlier, that was my original function, so I should still get that same derivative out, 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x, and the only thing left to do is just add up what I can which it looks like it's going to be the two middle terms. So 2 e to the x plus 4x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. And there you go. Again, you can factor out a constant, uh, or a constant in e to the x if you wanted to, but nothing's going to happen if you do. Uh, it also did not ask you to do it, so it's up to you if you want to. All right, example seven, find the fourth, eighth, and 21st derivative of sine. Oh my gosh, okay, well, let's just go for it. First derivative would be sine, or uh, sorry, cosine. Second derivative, negative sine. Third derivative, negative cosine. And the fourth derivative is sine. Huh, I got right back to the original function. So if I do the fifth derivative and so on, I'm gonna start to just sort of repeat this pattern over and over again. So sine and cosine are a little unique among the trig functions in that every so often their derivatives are gonna start to repeat themselves. It's gonna go in a cycle. And with sine and also cosine, it's every fourth derivative that's it's going to repeat, as long as it's just sine of x or cosine of x. If you change anything to it, then it's no longer going to just repeat like that. So every fourth derivative resets itself. So the fourth derivative is sine. The eighth derivative is also going to be sine. The twentieth derivative is going to be sine, so then the twenty-first is gonna be cosine. Okay, let's go ahead and stop the video here, and in the next one, we're gonna look at an application of higher order derivatives. Dun, dun, dun.